Hi everyone, my name's Pieta Valentine. I've written two books, The Residence Voice from a Dementia Unit and The Residence Rise from a Dementia Unit. So today's session is on de-escalating, de-escalating anger in a dementia unit. Anger is a really big issue, one of the biggest, if not the biggest issue in a dementia unit, uh, especially when it's high level and it comes in many ways, shapes and forms. So I'm just going to outline a couple of instances here that if this is the case where you are, where you have a family member in a dementia facility, if, this, if a similar instance is happening where you are, these may be some techniques here that can help you. Um, so, okay, so if it's low level anger and the family can manage it, you know, by taking the person out for a walk or out for a ride in the car or an activity, that's all good. But when the anger gets to moderate and or escalating to high, that's when other assistance and um, various aspects needed to, need to be put in place to be able to protect the other residents. So there was one example at the facility where I worked at, uh, where there was one woman who was particularly aggressive. Actually, with the facilities that I've worked at, of course, the women are the majority, so you're going to get more anger from women because women are the majority. But even so, that aside, I've noticed that men, big, tall, strong men that get angry, they tend to just um, have an outburst and then they settle down after that um, by whatever means. But with women, oh, I just find that I have found they can just go on and on and on all day being aggressive. It's terrible. You know, you might only have, you know, one in 20, one in 30 women like that, but still it has a huge impact on the community. And especially if it's a, a community that's unsettled anyway, that will stimulate the anger in the, in the person. So, okay, so with this one particular woman, she was... A bit of a battle axe, I have to say. She was strong as anything. Short, strong, stocky. And um, she was just terrible with the vulnerable residents, unfortunately. Um, she used to have this window seat, which was sunny in the prime spot that people like to sit in the sun. Everyone likes to sit in the sun, don't they? In a dementia unit, there's only, you know, so many spaces that people can have that chance to look out the window and see what's going on. But she used to take control of this one prime window seat, the two seats, and she'd refuse to let anyone else sit in the other seat. So there were only eight seats at the unit, so she had two of them. So you can, you know, she was taking up a quarter of the prime spaces. So anyway, if someone else attempted to sit in the other seat, she would just lash out at them, hit them, punch them, throw a handbag at them, walking stick, you know, hit them across the arms. And that was really aggressive. And the people would fall and injure themselves. Now, this is really not good. Um, but what happened was that when the doctor came in, the charming, well, the charming, lovely doctor in her eyes, in one second flat, she'd completely turn flutter the eyelashes, sweet as honey. He had absolutely no idea that she was a tyrant in the week. I'm sure the nurses were telling him, but because she could turn it on for him, he wasn't seeing it. And for whatever reason, it just kept going under the radar. And that woman was at the, at the facility being aggressive like this regularly for a good six months. And a lot of injuries happened because of that. I mean, she was eventually she went on to a higher level facility where there were more restraints, but it was six months that people had to put up with it. Now, in that instance, relatives have the power of complaint and it is heard. So really what needed to happen in the instance where nothing was happening was that relatives needed to band together and make a formal complaint, either writing on a piece of paper. There's always pads to be able to write either, you know, good or bad opinions, uh, complaints generally, I suppose, is when, but people do write in good responses as well. But there are these sheets that you can fill out that are at every unit 
and you can just actually um, lay out the details there. And if there's two or three relatives that do that, then it will go through to village management and get through to the doctor. So that's a quick way of, of um, processes being put in place to be able to de-escalate the anger of someone at the unit, especially if they're injuring others and indeed your mother or father. I mean, the thing is that a relative that's regularly visiting the unit, they will often get to see more than the doctor will get to see because, you know, um, the doctor just comes in, you know, once or twice a week, but you may be there for a good two or three hours with your mother regularly. So you may see more than what he does. And even though he has the notes and he can, um, you know, go by that, some things aren't reported maybe as much as others and things can get go under the radar. It's not like civil society where you've got, you know, the police and you've got, you know, the courts and you've got the judges and you've got the high court and, you know, the prisons and you've got everything in place for a secure environment so that people that are out of hand are contained. But in a dementia unit, everyone's thrown in together, you know, and there's no police or security guards there. There's only nurses, you know, and doctors, and doctors aren't there often, and the nurses are mainly females. And so that's why it's rife for anger to be able to, you know, have its way. And that's why relatives need to be more assertive. But what happens is that relatives often are not assertive enough because they feel beholden to the medical establishment. They feel beholden because their this, the lovely staff are looking after their relatives so well and they don't want to make a complaint. But it is important to make a complaint. Um, and also some relatives may not feel beholden, but they feel intimidated with the medical system. They don't understand it. They don't know it. They've never worked in it before. It's foreign to them. And they feel, oh, if I make a complaint, maybe that will you know, go badly for my mother somehow, but it won't. No, it won't. It's good to, it's good to complain. It legitimate complaints. It's not, you know, this is a well-founded complaint if a person's being aggressive and putting anyone at danger in the unit, your mother or anybody else, vulnerable people. So if you are a person who um, is a bit of an activist or that you're confident enough to speak out, and talk about that. It's a great service to the community and it's really important. Some elderly relatives don't have the confidence to go ahead with something like this, you know, to make a complaint and discuss it and, you know, correspond about it and go through all the levels. But um, if you're a person that's worked in, you know, bureaucratic environments, you're used, you're used to do it, writing emails and corresponding and putting down the facts and figures and details, fantastic. Do that, please. And they are, there are regular relatives meetings, um, you know, every six months or so at a facility, and it is important to voice these concerns there too. Of course, you can also voice your appreciation and what you value and like about the unit. And, you know, of course, there's always going to be staff um, who do wonderful work. Well, it's not actually about the staff, is it? It's about the actual residents. So, yes, uh, do make comment about the residents that are aggressive and then, you know, the powers to be will get to know and things can come under control. But uh, this, this won't happen in a settled dementia community, but if the unit is unsettled and, you know, there's a lot of these sort of things going on where people are feeling isolated, abandoned, distressed and angry, then yeah, it fuels up, you know, just like any society, it can become aggressive. Any society can turn like this and dementia societies especially do become like this. And so that's why it's important. I want to give you this information so that you can be aware of the systems in place for you as relatives to be able to have that power to help these vulnerable people. Please pass on this very important information because it's not often known what actually happens in dementia communities, especially with this anger aspect. Please pass this on, the links and information to be able to help these vulnerable people in these dementia communities. Thank you.